Hi everyone, my name is Bogdan. I'm with DNN Sharp. And this is the video where I present the masterpiece, our Action 4 module that we've been working on intensively for the last few months. And we've done many great features, some of which you may already know. But now I will present you the final piece that makes Action Form the coolest form builder for DNN, and that is our new data binding expression. And that is expression that run on the client side to dynamically update form fields. And we currently support three types of data binding expressions. And I will take each one and show you a few simple examples. The first data binding expression is the show binding. And this is basically a Boolean expression that is evaluated on the client side that determines either a field is visible or not. So let's take uh, maybe a classic example where we have a checkbox that when ticked will show will show a uh, text box. So I'll create a checkbox. Let's call it um, do you have a name? And then let me just switch these two between them. I want to show this text box. Let's call it name. Only when the this checkbox is ticked. And now what I have to do is go into this name field in the show binding, write a Boolean expression, and here I will use the field name in the syntax you already know. It's basically used everywhere, this uh, field name between brackets that will get replaced with the actual form value. And I compare this, and here I just use standard uh, JavaScript operators. I just compare it with um, something with true in this case, or I can just not compare it because this is already a Boolean expression. It's already a checkbox that it will, it will be either true or false. Okay, I'll just save this and I will go back and just show you what I have so far. Do you have a name? Yes. And now I get to specify the name. I untick, it disappears. So at a basic level, this is it. But then you can um, you can write more complex expression. For example, let's say if the name is John, I want to show him maybe let's say a drop down and say which John are you? And maybe you could be John Doe or John Wayne. Okay, and I want to make this visible only when the user types John in the name field. And to do this, I'll write a new data binding expression here, and I'll just use the name field. Again, the same syntax. And now I need to use the equal operator and check it against this word, John. And here you can use either single quotes or double, double quotes, quotes, whatever suits you. So I'm just going to use single quotes. And uh, this will return a uh, true or false. It will evaluate a true or false. Let me save this and go back. And now say, do you have a name? Yes, I do have a name. And I start typing, nothing happens. And as I when I finish typing John, now I see a drop down. Which John are you? And I can say I'm John Doe. Then if I change this, that drop down disappears. So I can build a dynamic form, you see, starting from a checkbox. And then uh, you see here what happened when I unticked the checkbox. That field was, is now hidden, but now I get, I, I, I get this leftover, which John are you? But I can easily change this just by going to the which John are you and extend this expression with an end and I'll copy th the other expression. I'll grab this and use it in on, on this other field as well. So now this is end 
Boolean end. So it, it says that both conditions must be true for this field to be visible. So the name must be John and this checkbox must be ticked. So I'm just saving this, going back. And let's see how this works. So yes, I have a name and the name is John and I am John Wayne. And now if I take the checkbox out, the both the both uh, fields disappeared. Okay. Now let's move on to the next data binding, which is the value data binding. So you can basically bind the value of other fields in a new field. And for example, I can make a display name field where I want to get the value of the text box, the name text box. And now I concatenate a string, a space, and you concatenate by using the plus operator. So this is plain JavaScript syntax, except the token which will get replaced by JavaScript variables. So here I put a space, and that here I want to put the last name, which is uh, actually the value in the dropdown, which John am I. And I will take this one and uh, concatenate it here. So now I should get in this field, I will get name, space, and the value in this which John are you field. I'll save, and let me show you how this works. So I have the display name visible because I, I haven't messed with its um, show binding. And now here I start typing. And you see as I type, the other drop down, uh, the other text box, the display name, uh, updates and if I write John, I also uh, also see this drop down. And if I choose Doe, you see it appends Doe or Wayne. But if I go and touch this field, I update it manually. Let's say the third, and now I go and change the name. You see it no longer synchronized. It no longer changes the display name. So once once you touch a field, that is once you edit it manually, it loses the automatic update because you don't want the user to lose its uh, option after he makes, the, makes, makes, makes them um, manually. So this is it. Basically, you can use the form, the same form token syntax in this uh, change binding. Remember that you cannot use tokens at this point because you're running on the client side. And finally, let me show you the other binding, which is the on change. And this is basically some JavaScript code you can put that will execute on the change event. And here, if you w need more complex scripts, you can access the whole form and you can uh, use, for example, either this syntax or again the form syntax, the token syntax. So you can uh, write like this and access all the uh, fields in the form and you can use the name, for example, um, I'll use the display name. And then that value, each field has a value. And then say equals, and you write something. Okay. So when this field changes, the value in the display name will get the value something. Let's check that this is actually happening. So you see, when I change it, it does something here. Now I can go and write John, it will get updated, but as soon as I come here and type anything, I'll get again something. But that is not the purpose of this function because you saw you already can do this with um, the change binding. The purpose of this um, on change is to write your own custom JavaScript. So basically here you can you can do your JavaScript 
anything that you want you can do a four you can do anything you can do an ajax call but this code runs in a special context and i will talk more about this later where it, we're actually using angular js so this code r runs inside an, ang an angular js controller so you already have access to various services and some data and data bindings so it's quite powerful but there are also some restrictions for example you cannot uh, use uh, javascript uh, jquery in this uh, context to manipulate ui but you can for example call call uh, your external function which does some jquery just not in this function and before um, i finish with this video i want to show you one more um, situation where you can do operation on the um, value data binding so you want to compute a value based on values on other field but you also want to do some processing what we did with the display name we just concatenated this thing but let's say you want to get the first letter of the which john are you and you just use plain javascript functions like the substring fu function or you can uh, yeah let's do a substring and let's say i want to extract the floor first character though in this case i could have just used the angular operation like this okay maybe i'll extract the first two so now what i should be getting is john uh, wa or john do let's go back and check this real quick so i'm john and now i get to be hmm. let, let me go back to this real quick yeah i think i should be uh, calling the substring properties on this object so i should say which john are you this is the string and then i want to substring the first two characters let's see how this works So now you see I am John Way or John Doe. So you've seen how we can use um, binding expressions to build uh, dynamic UI on in the forms. And for now we only have three bindings. We have the show binding where you can uh, show hide fields dynamically based on values on other fields. We have the value bindings where you can compute uh, values starting from um, uh, what's entered in other fields. And then we have the on change handler where you can basically put your JavaScript code. And we can add more handlers in the future. We, for, for example, you can add, add um, binding for when the field should be disabled. So you can disable fields dynamically or we can add, uh, add a binding for adding a CSS class so you want uh, a field to have a CSS class depending on the values in other fields so basically the possibilities here are, um, are endless and we will we'll probably end up um, rearranging some of this UI to satisfy an, a growing number of binding expressions so probably we'll have something like a menu add binding expression instead of ha having all the expression listed from the start this is it i hope you'll enjoy this and thank you for your time